Hey, this is Tamara, signing on with what could be the last part of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. No, that came out. <clears throat> I mean, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, plural, single game. Anyways, so last time after goofing around, getting to Ilos, fighting some Geth, and then talking to a um, VI named Vigil, we learned... Oh, VI. Okay. Uh, we learned what the conduit actually was, and it was a mass relay to get us into the Citadel, where... Um, basically, it's completely under siege. Sovereign and Saren have completely broke in, and now we gotta fight our way through. So, I don't remember this being terribly long, but this is, again, probably gonna be the final part of the Let's Play. So, let's rock. What are you doing, man? You need those. Maybe. Well, I suppose that's why the Geth are here. You don't need the Keepers anymore. <laughs> So, so yeah, it turns out the Citadel is a giant mass relay. Is a giant mass relay to summon the other Reapers. So, wow. Okay, seeing Sovereign appear out of the clouds like that was pretty cool. Nothing can stop me now. I'm having such a good time. <laughs> Just Sovereign's like, I'm actually having fun with this. I know we're not programmed for that, but uh, it happens. He's the tip of the relay. Gotta get going. Saren's locked the elevator. Suit up. We're going outside. Okay. I forgot how cool this whole thing idea is. You know, Mass Effect can do melodrama pretty good, but they, you know, they got a sense of scale and everything. So yeah, now you're just like walking across the Citadel sideways, so that's pretty cool. Let's get the... Got your rocket. <clears throat> oh, you're still alive. Get out of here. Krogan Warlord, ah, Jesus. Uh, 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 Neural Shock. <laughs> he just slides. Then we are, I think, got him in stasis. That was funny. That was w a well timed takedown. <clears throat> Whoop. 
Uh, that worked well enough. Med gel up before I get complacent. Still don't have the fence turret. Oop. Oh, can't do med or er, omni gel on that. We don't need it, but we'll get there. Electronics incident, omni gel. What? I made a mistake, apparently. Let's take omni gel to try again. I don't know. Did I not realize that, or? We'll eventually take it down. Okay, I didn't think. I'm gonna stay back here. I ain't dealing with Krogan. No, he's already down. Nice. Level up. Probably should mess with that. Increase stasis, because why not? We'll increase lift, increase sniper, because why not? Takes a lot of kind of like sunk down. Yeah, got him. Okay, that turret's still down for some reason. I thought it was still up. Getting really close to Sovereign. Did not realize we were already up to his feet like this. We're coming for you! Bam! Got you. Uh, this way. Alright. Hey, we're on solid ground again. Hut, 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 hut. Medical kit. Yay. Hostile 
damn, the sniper is actually really good and really fun to use in Mass Effect. It's a shame, like, the original version of the game just made it terrible unless you really put a lot into it. And it just was not worth it to do that when you could use anything else. But this is awesome. I'm using sniper as a basic rifle. Tag. There ya. Yo, we gotta talk. I think he's dead. We won, guys. Go home. Dude, not cool. I was afraid you would make it in time, Shepard. Time for what? The final confrontation. I think we both expected it would end like this. This is the climactic finale. It had to end like this. In a few minutes, Sovereign will have full control of all the Citadel systems. The relay will open. The Reapers will return. I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. Is this your car? Encounter on Vermeer, but I've changed since then. Improved. Sovereign has. Let Sovereign implant you? Are you insane? I suppose I should thank you, Shepard. After Vermeer, I couldn't stop thinking about what you said. About Sovereign manipulating me. About indoctrination. The doubts began to eat away at me. Sovereign sensed my hesitation. I was implanted to strengthen my resolve. He literally just made the indoctrination. I believe in Sovereign completely. I understand that the Reapers need or Join us, and Sovereign will find a place for you, too. You're indoctrinated. Sovereign's controlling you we even have confirmation plan. of that from you see that? Vigil. The relationship is symbiotic. Organic and machine intertwined. A union of flesh and steel. The strengths of both, the weaknesses of neither. I am a vision of the future, Shepard. The evolution of all organic life. This is our destiny. Join Sovereign. And experience a true rebirth. Yeah, they'll betray you. Enough talk. You could beat them. Sovereign hasn't won yet. I can stop it from taking control of the station. Step aside, and the invasion will never happen. We can't stop it. Not forever. You saw the visions. You saw what happened to the Protheans. The Reapers are too powerful. Yeah, don't give in to them. And yeah, this is why. This is one of the more famous aspects or moments in all of Mass Effect because this conversation was Saren. Come on, man. It's not over yet. You can still redeem yourself. Goodbye, Shepard. Thank you. Not what I meant, but yeah. I guess that's one way to do it. Yeah, again, this is probably one of like the more famous scenes of Mass Effect, is that you can talk him not you don't necessarily talk him into suicide, but it just kinda like that's where his mind goes. And from there, it's just sort of like, you know, yeah. It's just a very shocking scene. Not many villains like that you can just, like, talk to at the time. I've got control of all systems. Quick, open the station's arms. Maybe the fleet can take Sovereign down. See if you can open a communications channel. The Destiny Ascension. Main drives offline. Kinetic barriers down 40%. The Council is on board. I repeat, the Council is on board. Normandy to the Citadel. Normandy to the Citadel. Please tell me that's you, Commander. I'm here, Joker. We caught that distress call, Commander. I'm sitting here in the Andura sector with the entire Arturus fleet. We can save the Ascension. Just unlock the relays around the Citadel and we'll send the cavalry in. Are you really willing to sacrifice human lives to save the Council, Shepard? This is bigger than humanity. Sovereign is a threat to every organic species in the galaxy. The Council must be sacrificed for the greater good. Don't waste your reinforcements. Hold them back until the Citadel arms open up. Save the human fleet to attack Sovereign. 
What's the order, Commander? Come in now to save the Ascension? Or move back? Yeah. It concentrate on sovereign. That's just like a neutral answer. Yeah, yeah. I remember this like one of the big ones, and this was just like sort of like one of my faster like screw the council, forget it. They've been jerks the entire time when I was younger. Even now, yeah, screw the council. They're jerks. No, you know I know it doesn't sound good to like ah, uh, you know, let the leaders die, but also you know we got save three of them or save probably tens if not hundreds more to fight in this upcoming war so yeah hold off joker we're not sacrificing human lives to save the council keep our ships back until they can get a shot at sovereign a sacrifice for the greater good i only pray it is not made in vain yeah sorry council All but ships home formation wait for a shot at sovereign nothing else matters i repeat nothing else matters Sorry, Council, we warned you about this. And you know, hindsight's 2020 and all, but we really gotta focus on this whole other thing. Commander, we're picking up reinforcements. It's the Alliance. Open a comm channel. This is the Ascension. We are taking heavy damage. Guardian defenses are over. Kinetic barriers are <laughs> offline. Commander, they closed the channel. Oopsie. My hand slipped. You know, I don't even think we even see the Counts or we get any final thoughts from them, so really they are just like the faceless entity that dies here. So, you know, got less to do with them than everything else, so it's like, whatever. Make sure he's dead. Nothing we can do now. <clears throat> so can we take like his awesome giant hoverboard? He's dead. Okay. I am sovereign, and this station is mine. Yeah, so now Saren under control of Sovereign and is going crazy. He's become a super get, basically. Did the neural shot not work? Point blank. Ah, damn it. Uh, Liara. I don't know if that actually... Yeah, so he's just jumping around like one of the stalkers, which, bleh. You know, kind of like turning a boss, making a boss out of like one of the minor enemies, which, okay, whatever, but you know, it's kind of all it is, now I'm thinking about it. Take 
that monster down no matter what the cost. Including the Galactic Council. Oop. Oh god, Saren? Are you okay, man? <laughs> you got clean. <laughs> what? Uh, guys. I'm trying to take care of your boss here. Oh, he got free. Damn, that was like perfect. I should probably like... This is weird, like, half-mouth. Whoops. Heal. There we go. We are fine. Uh-oh. We are not fine. Where's... We go that lift a number on them. Oop. Getting closer, or did that take him out? Okay, uh, not a crazy impactful boss, but you know, it was certainly an interesting little thing. So called synthetic human, or yeah, organic uh, machine hybrid. Creepy. this race. I'm trying to think of a, like a one-liner to like rhyme with sovereign or something, but I got nothing. <laughs> I am glad I don't have to clean this up. <laughs> Dramatic sci-fi music to reveal everyone's still okay. Captain Anderson, we found him. They're in here. Take it easy. It's over. You're safe now. Where's the commander? Again, I'm kind of down with, like, the dramatics of Mass Effect. They really do make it feel like a sci-fi epic with, like, the swell of dramatic music and camera angles. Ugh, that smile. Ugh. All right, cool. You got your message, Ambassador. What's all this about? Medal of Honor. No need to get worked up, Captain. I'd Complete the game on any difficulty. meeting with all my teeth still in place. You should thank me for what I did. If the Normandy was still grounded, we'd all be dead right now. I understand, Captain. You did what you had to do. That's not why you're here. We need to talk about what happened to the Council. Uh-huh. 
Commander Shepard did the right thing. We had to hold our fleet back to go out to Sovereign. It was the only way. I agree, but this also presents us with an opportunity. The Citadel fleets were decimated in the attack. Their losses have made the Alliance stronger. They can't rebuild without us. We need to take the lead in forming a new council, one with a human chairman at its head. It seems a little opportunistic, so... This wasn't some plan for the Alliance to seize power. Forcing the other races to accept our leadership is going to cause problems. Especially now we got yeah, potentially more Reapers still showing up. They've never faced anything like this before. They don't know what to do. They want us to step forward. They believe in us because of you, Shepard. You saved the galaxy from Sovereign. You're a symbol of everything good about humanity, our courage, our strength. Would you be saying that if I went for a full Renegade yeah, playthrough? Right. The other races look up to us now. They won't just accept our leadership, they'll welcome it. Right, but let's not also everything get too crazy with it. The Alliance will want to know <clears throat> who you think our council chairman should be. Anderson. We're about to go into war. We need someone with military experience. Someone like Captain Anderson. Also, you're a dick. Case. Captain? Are you ready for this? I don't know if any of us are ready for this, but I'll do what I can. So what happens? Sure, Odia is the diplomat, but Anderson is much cooler. We quit wasting time. The Reapers are still out there. They're coming, and I'm gonna find some way to stop them. Shepard's right. We're headed for war with the Reapers. If we lose, it's the end of all life as we know. We have to show the rest of the galaxy what it takes to survive. With the support of the other races, we can win this battle. With them behind us, we can stand against the Reapers' return and drive them back into dark space. All right. This feels like it's gonna be like a final result screen or something. Nope, it's just a. Okay. Okay. Project director Casey Hudson. Oop, and just skip the credits, because I'm mean. <clears throat> Press any button. If we load the game, do we just stop before that final thing, or...? Nope, okay. So we're just stuck in the final fight, huh? Is I thought we could backtrack a little bit. Okay, well, that explains that. Uh, yeah, we can just... Yeah, or unless... Nope. Low auto saves at Old Tower. Oh wait, that must be. No, okay. Never mind. So yeah, I guess that's the end of the game. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that was the first Mass Effect. First Mass Effect remastered for, you know, the current gen consoles. How is it? It's okay. <laughs> like, okay, Mass Effect 1 definitely has still has its aged moments like this is the most playable it's probably going ever going to be without like a full-scale remake um <clears throat> but with that being said you know there's still a lot of like this introduced at the time mass effect was revolutionary this introduced people to you know a more like this is kind of defined with like what rpgs would be for a long time in the game industry bioware you know, kind of set the precedent for what things would be like, you know, the involvement, you know, they did with KOTOR, but Mass Effect definitely had, like, a bigger appeal. KOTOR was kind of like a, you know, kind of almost cultish in its, um, popularity, but this, well, no, that's unfair to KOTOR, but point being, <clears throat> you know, things with that Bioware has done, this is kind of like, you know, in the other games they've done, like Dragon Age, it's kind of like a similar system of, you know, dialogue wheels, deep lore, and, like, crazy customization and ability movesets and just like the sci-fi lore of like all the different alien species all the planets and this like end of the galaxy 
thing is really cool. It's always interesting to learn about this stuff. And, you know, um, you know, and I complain about the side missions, but they do make me want to do them to learn more, see new characters, or see how my party reacts to what happens. And it's just really interesting. And there's a lot of stuff that still really holds up. The care well, in theory, because what really doesn't hold up, the gameplay still isn't very good. It's passable for what it is, but, you know, with a lot of repetitious firefighting, and if you don't have really good proficiency with any weapon because of the class you pick, you know, you can be pretty limited on how they work or how much potential you can wring out of them. Meanwhile, there's also just, like, the... It takes a long time, so if, what, I finished this in 18 hours, and you know, I think that's fine. I could have done more, could have done more questing, could have done more things with like the Mako and planets, but it's all pretty boring. Yeah, the end results could get you like a cool character interaction or a lot of loot, um, but it just takes so long. And despite the Mako upgrades, I remember it was the IGN review, I forget who the reviewer was at the time, but, um, but the review on IGN was like, you know, the problem was never act maybe was never actually the Mako itself, it's that you do nothing fun with it. And yeah, that's kinda like the big problem. Cause, you know, going across the planets is kinda cool, but you know, with the uneven terrain and even with the boosting now, it's still pretty slow. At least you can repair it on the run, but it's still just sort of like there's nothing to do, nothing really to fight. And it just it's a slog. I really wish you could have, I would have spent credits trying to like increase the power of any of the weaponry, you're getting new stuff to customize the Mako, even a paint job, but no, nothing. So it was just sort of like, ah, whatever, this is just like wasting time. And you know, even though there were a lot of really weird side quests and yeah, the binary choice system of just sort of like good option, bad option is just like, you know, whatever, it's a, it's a relic, but it does its job, although I've never done like a renegade run, but it seems like the renegade based options just like end conversation. So it's just like, feels like you, I'm assuming you miss out on a lot if you truly believe, you know, the aggressive and mean answers are the way to go. And meanwhile, yeah, some of the characters are still really cool. You know, you got Liara, scientist, and like she's your outlet for figuring out like what the Protheans are and like, you know, where you can get leads. Um, the Quarians is this kind of like, um, yeah, kind of like Amish mixed with his, uh, yeah, like Amish space goers who can leave their home to bring back new stuff. Um, Garrus, again, you can evolve his character from believing, like, you know, get the job done no matter the cost, and, like, maybe we can think on that. And even Rex, even though he's, like, the brute, has a lot more going for him than just, like, fighting. And he's actually, like, really philosophical for Krogans, or, like, you know, takes, like, the Krogan philosophy and just sort of, like, you know, we like to fight, but we still gotta think long term. Um, and that's really cool. Um, Kaiden never gave him a real shot in my original playthrough, and coming back to him, he's actually got some really cool stuff. It's, like, really dark, like, the abuse he suffered, um when becoming a biotic, but, you know, how he overcame that, and how he's like, seems pretty, you know, well-adjusted, considering what kind of stuff he detailed that he went through, and he was being probably light on details, and he was actually really interesting, and, you know, Ashley is the one who came out, um, in the end, and I forgot <laughs> just, like, how overtly racist Ashley is, and... Yeah, it was just sort of like, wow, this is, like, aggressive, it's not even nuanced, which I'm hoping, I think, if I recall, like, with the, putting her in the right direction, we can, she can get better and learn to trust people be learn to trust, um, aliens more, and so I'm really hoping, like, that development pays out by the time we get to three, which that's a long ways away. Um, what else? There's a lot of other characters, you know, just, like, a lot of little neat character interactions, little neat side quests, and just, like, character-building moments, whether it be for, like, Shepard or the other characters. I thought every character had, like, a main, like, a side quest, but it was just, like, Garrus, which, you know, except it was just, it was just Garrix, Rex, and, um, Tally, which Tally is, is so well-hidden, basically. So unless you're, you're gonna, you stumble upon that if you 
just randomly. It's not really something she set out you to do. So that's a little awkward. Again, there's a lot of things that are still awkward about the first Mass Effect. And while the series just gets, you know, I think as far as I remember from my first playthrough, because this is only the second time I've actually finished the Mass Effect, the first Mass Effect. Because I got, like, halfway through, I think I was on, was it Pharos, the, like, company colony. Um, I think I got, like, all done, or almost done with Pharos last time I played, and that was a couple years ago, and that was on the original 360 version. Um, on an Xbox One, but it was still just sort of like, eh, I, I just stopped and then I just like never got back to it. Because, you know, Mass Effect 1 is still an essential play if you're going to go through the series. You know, I say only finishing this one up and not getting to the other two. But just like Mass Effect provides all the context you need for the next couple of games. And it helps you develop who your who your shepherd is it helps you learn on like who these characters are and what they're like and building you up on like the lore and information you need going forward or at least is helpful going forward what the reapers are what the protheans are um and just like some of the other stuff and there's a lot of hints to things like cerberus and things that will appear in mass effect 3 or will be referenced to um, and Cerberus will be a big thing in the next game, which I'm really excited to get to, because for the longest time, Mass Effect 2 was, like, one of my all-time favorite games, and it's definitely the peak of the franchise, at least from my initial playthrough. Um, at least from what I remember, but I'm still sure it holds up really good. So yeah, Mass Effect 1, gameplay's not the strongest because it's still, like, very clumsy, like, the cover mechanics don't really work. It's one of those awkward cover mechanics where you have to press up to a wall and maybe you connect to it, which is really awkward. It's no Splinter Cell, it's no Gears of War, and I think the next couple of games do better on that, if I recall. I could be wrong, but I'm getting there. And in hindsight, that point of no return, they really should have helped out better, not just like locking you out of the Citadel after a certain point, because that just makes some things just undoable now and if there's no way to um you know if there's no way to okay if there's no way to like do certain side quests now because basically like, the citadel is under siege and after we finish the game it's back to the main menu so we can't do anything oh cool Oh, cool. So we could just, like, do that? Oh, okay, so now if we start a new game, we just get, like, all these new... That's cool, actually. When we can play the game and we're getting, like, bonuses that we can use on other character trees next time. That's cool. To play the majority of the game, did I not... Completionist. I must not have been close. Complete five missions with the Krogan squad member. Really? I, Rex didn't get? Okay. 75% impossible Paragon or Renegade points. Principled. Come Spectre. Complete Mass Effect 1 or 2 or 3 with Insanity without changing difficulty. Eh, probably not going to do any of that. Complete all three games. Yeah, wait. Paramore 1, establish a romantic relationship in 1, 2, or 3. Establish or, and, or rekindle a romantic relationship in 2 games in Mass Effect. Which again, I had a power outage after the initial joining with Liara. And so because I did it again, I think it registered weird. So that's weird <laughs> in all 3 games of the Mass Effect. That's, yeah. Finish Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 with the same character. That's what I'm shooting for and I'm really excited to like get through that. Like, I don't know what it's like to play... Actually, I think I played Mass Effect 3 a bit. I think I got halfway through that as well, just starting a fresh campaign. And, you know, without having, like, the character connections, there is something that you lose in that. But it's still playable, but it's not as exciting as, you know... Um... <clears throat> it's not as exciting as, um, seeing everything and having this, like, one shepherd with all his growth and progression and friendships and enemies, like, get through the end of the series. So, for now, that's it for Mass Effect 1. I feel like I'm missing a lot more I want to say, but it's just, like, it's slipping my mind. There are some relics to it, and it's just, like, you know, it's, you know, 
it's aged. And again, some of the other things in Mass Effect that have aged quite a bit, like the romancing uh, romances in Mass Effect are just kind of like, eh, I don't know. But again, whatever. Old, an old relic that you can really can remake the game without, even though like it's not as well written or as well done. It just feels really sleazy, especially with Liara, which that's on me. But it's still just sort of like, ah, I thought that, you know, I thought she was a little more mature than this from my memory, but, you know, wrong. But again, we got a couple more games to go. There's a lot of room for these characters to grow up even more. And that's what's so exciting about Mass Effect is that just like, you know, so much will change. And, you know, we'll get there. Um, let's see, what else is there? And, yeah, as far as Mass Effect 1 goes, I think that's pretty much it. I wanted to do a little bit more, but now I'd have to, like, start a new profile, which I could, but nah. And, you know, I don't know how things are gonna lead up to Mass Effect 3, where how much you do, you know, I wanted to do more, as much, a lot, of, as much as I could at least I, at least as much as I could stand because I want like a lot of things to carry over into Mass Effect 3 and I want progression to be made um oh one thing I can't remember if the, it was in Mass Effect 1 but I could have sworn it was but I feel like we did not you know get to learn much about Ashley and I'm not sure why because I could have sworn you know from what I remember I remember something that interested, interested me about Ashley in my uh, Mass Effect originally, the thing I remembered most about her is that her, you know, she's re she's religious, and she brings that up, and I can't remember, I thought it was in Mass Effect 1, where I thought we heard, like, her dad died or something, you know, just like, or was it her sister's husband or something, I don't know, I just, like, I felt like we learned something, and then she's like, recites a Bible quote, and it's like, oh, you're religious, like, yeah, and then you could just chastise her, it's like, leave it off my ship, which, you know, don't do, but it's just, like, it's interesting seeing, like, somebody with, like, a, you know, faith in space travel, which is always an interesting, like, conceit, but I thought Ashley talked about that in the first Mass Effect, I thought she did, maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like we're missing a lot of information about her and Rex. You know, maybe there's not as much development with some of these characters in the first game, but again, there's more to come. Which, you know, as a standalone thing, it's okay. You know, I recommend playing Mass Effect, but keep in mind, there's a lot of nonsense you have to go through. And, you know, it makes it worth it. Mass Effect is an essential thing, is an essential, is imperative to the series. Because, yeah, if you're going to play the other Mass Effect games, you should probably start with one, just because it provides that context. You could go on to the next one, and s at least in the original ser original versions of the game, people would say, like, yeah, Mass Effect 2 is the best, you might be better off starting with that one. Mass Effect, yeah, fills in a lot of blanks, but the gameplay just drags it down. And that's still true here. It's more bearable... Um, but it's not as interesting or as fluid as I think it will become. So, yeah, Mass Effect, it's still... It's still worth playing, especially in this form on the Legendary Edition. Or also, the original three Mass Effect games are also all on Game Pass on Xbox, so if you don't want to spend the money on the Legendary Edition, you could do that. At least on... Is it on... I wonder, is it on PlayStation Now as well? I don't know, PlayStation Now is a terrible service compared to at Game Pass. But yeah, if you want to play Mass Effect, there are ways the original games are pretty cheap. You can get collections or you can get them individually or you can play them for free on services. Uh, um, but you can also play the Legendary Edition, which, you know, three in one, which people have been anticipating for a long time. And after nearly 20 hours, finally got through the first game. You know, took it was a little slow at points, but a lot of interesting stuff still there. So with that being said, I think we're going to wrap up. So yeah, with that all being said, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe and all that. This is Samara signing off. And thank you for watching me play Mass Effect.